I'm back. Well, what do you think? Do I sound good? Well, I should do. I call them little mics. No more of this banging on the desks when you're doing reviews and things. <laughs> Gets out of hand a bit, man. Uh, anyway, what have we got today? Well, I went along to one of them Fender things, you know. No, not on your, not on your car. <laughs> one of them Fender show things. They, they, they have them at the dealers sometime. And you go along and they, they show you the latest thing and get it out, so to speak. And they had the, uh, the Fender Elite Strat. I like Elite. I, well, I do. Uh, except it brings back bad memories. But we'll come to that. But before we really get down to it, so to speak, uh, let's uh, just talk about prices of this thing early on, just so everybody's sort of more clear than what Fender would like you to know, especially if you're in England. <laughs> well, in America, if you use a proxy server, because you won't get there any other way, because Fender sort of reroute you back to the English site, it's $1,799 list price, and you'll be able to buy it cheaper than that. Make no mistake, you can, because I've been there. And in England, now, uh, just a, a month or so after I went uh, to this uh, shindig, <laughs> it's now £1,549 list. £1,549. Now, if you do the equation between the dollar and the pound, well, yeah, there's a little bit more cost in England. But uh, let's not worry about that. That's it for now on the prices, but we'll come back to all that a bit later. So let's just uh, zoom in, look at the whites of its eyes, so to speak, and uh, yeah, flip the lid open. Hold on. Well, you won't notice it at first, but for some obscure reason, the strat faces this way in the case instead of that way in the case. It doesn't make a problem until you try to video it. <laughs> it's hanging off the bench. Ah, oh, what next? Now, in reality, that's as far as I can go. If I go any more, the guitar will go <laughs> on the floor that way. Yeah, well, what do you think of the colour? Yeah, it's one of them vintage cherry things. I thought that sounded good. Yeah. I've played it, but uh, there's a story behind that. I'm going to pull it out of its case and put it down on this, this table so we can get a, a nice close look up at it. And uh, I'll tell you about the things that uh, I had when I pulled it out of the case which is all very interesting, because it'll happen to you, probably, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Hold on. Whew, that's better. Now, before we really get carried away and start looking at the guitar, let's look at the, the bits that it comes with. Always nice to know. There's a few extras and things in this one, but, uh, yeah, it's all good. You got a very nice strap, not one of the cheap things. This one's sort of, I don't know, nylon-backed leather, they say. Yeah, it might be leather. Oh, you get uh, locks too. Yeah, strap locks are always useful. Saves it forward on the ground. I had that happen once. Yeah, not good. Let's throw that away. Now we've got uh, your better than average fender leads. You know what the standard ones are like in the shop. Well, these are better. Pity they don't sell them. Well, maybe they do. They just didn't have them where I looked. You then get a manual couple of bits and pieces, you get a, a little allowing key for adjusting the heights of the uh, the bridge and things, which we'll see later on. You, you get oh, a tremolo. Well, you would, wouldn't you? But let's come back to that. A couple of keys for the case. And one of these instruction things. I always love this sort of stuff. One of these instruction things that shows you all the various settings of the pickups, because it's sort of changed on this one. Well, it, it has on some earlier ones, but we'll come back to that one too. So, that's nearly it. Except, I did pull off the, uh, the shipping off the case, because this one had never been opened from, when it shipped from Fender. And it tells me it went by sea, by the way. They didn't ship anything by air, so shipping by sea, well, that's a number of weeks to get to the UK. And it's very cheap, just remember that. So we'll come back to that too, won't we? By the way, uh, I bought this guitar, uh, as I said, at the, uh, the sort of the shindig that Fender and a uh, company called Music Store Pro, local dealer, had. All very nice. Met a few Fender guys and things like that. Had quite a chat. 
although the, the actual guitar guy didn't turn up. But uh, they've got a very friendly uh, Fender. Actually, he was an amp guy, but he, he knew all about this, which was nice. Uh, Music Store Pro, yeah. Main store, musicstorepro.co.uk. Enquiries at Music Store Pro. UK. That's where I got mine from. And this is before they went up. And this is only a few weeks ago, about four or five weeks ago. They were £1,387 in the UK list. Now they're £1,550 list. Well, maybe they were £1,450 list. And he, no, no, I'm pretty sure that was the price. It's here. Anyway, in any case... I got a voucher off this guy because they do the special deal for this, this shindig thing and uh, got a hundred pounds back and uh, it's all good because I'm going to review something over there a bit later, well actually on a different video uh, that I got with me hundred pounds so good on your music store pro, good stuff, go and check their website, that's the end of the plug in a music store pro by the way, we're going to get down to the guitar, <sighs> takes so long doesn't it, yeah, some of you guys complain You would. <laughs> yeah, so let's get a bit closer to this thing and start running through it. And then uh, when I've run through the guitar, as they say, I'll talk about what I received and what I had to do. Hold on. Well, here we are. The Fender Elite. This body's, uh, it's older. It's not an ash, it's an older, so it... It's not quite as good as it could be, I suppose, but there you go. I can see a join down there straight off. Maybe you can too. Uh, it's polyurethane, so it's that thick stuff that you're used to seeing on fenders. You know how it goes. Uh, but they do say that the shape of this thing's been uh, slightly changed, and, you know, in these uh, these cutouts and things. Well, we'll look at them a bit closer as we as we move around uh, the strat. We'll see what we really get, won't we? But not bad. You've got these, uh, as I said, these uh, strap locks, which I thought were a nice addition, should have been on there from day one, but I haven't invented them then, I guess. But <laughs> Let's move along a bit. Usual Fender input, nothing to say about that, nothing to change there. There's nothing elite about that. <laughs> Probably isn't even made by Fender, who knows. Uh, we've got the bridge. Again, you've got a standard bridge, a standard two-point bridge, that is, the newer one. Well, it's less newer these days, isn't it? So, well, what's changed on the bridge? Well, nothing. <laughs> well, maybe that uh, weaver's changed a bit. Uh, I haven't really tried out one of the, the sort of latest uh, two-prong on the old or the fenders. Uh, but anyway, come back to this. No, we won't come back to it. We'll do it now. If you notice, there's no uh, thread. It just sort of pushes in there and clicks. There it is. Now one of the things I don't like about this uh, guitar, right off, the second you put that in, you, you, you're standing there with it. If you notice, if you look at this arm, it's, it's actually parallel to the strings. And if I'd have showed it you the way this guitar was set up, it would have been there, down, further. So, not impressed really. Uh, it's too... It's too parallel with the strings. It did want this end piece coming this way a bit, out a bit, so that you just get a better uh, control. This is in your strings and in your face, uh, for me, uh, I'll stress. So, yeah, good arm, except for that. It's a bit of a problem. I'm going to take mine just about there and bend it up a bit. I'm like that. What you have got, though, is you've got well, they feel like they're almost regular plastic knobs with a sort of collar around the edge. feels that way to me. You can see it very clearly from here. It's sort of rubberized just around this edge. Oh, and don't forget you've got this sort of extra pickup selector which switches everything, from what I can see, into parallel or series mode. But more on that later. So that's the control knob. And just while I'm on this control knob, uh, something I don't like about it, like most fenders that I've used, and uh, that's this. Well, if you relate to where it's located on the guitar, well, it could be a bit of a problem. You see, for somebody like me, 
that's right where I play. I, you know, I want to pick him there. And this has always been a problem for me on Fender Stratocasters. Look, if you look at this one, it turns really, really easily. You see that? Really, it's really, honestly. These, well, that one's tight because that's got a, a lock off down there. We'll come to that one. But this is really slack. And what you tend to do, or I tend to do, and I'm damn sure an awful lot of guys do, as you're playing, this thing creeps back a bit, or gets knocked back a bit. And you know, if it only gets knocked back to there, you're taking away a fair amount of output from those pickups, just but knocking it back just to number eight. Then you don't get all the drive that you want, and you don't go to get the tone you want, and on it goes. So if they just made this slightly different, it would have been uh, a big improvement. Bear in mind that this is called an Elite Strat. And that improvement's right here. They've already done it, you see. See, this one's got it. Listen. It sort of locks into place. Massive improvement. If they just put that there, oh, man, the difference it would have made to me uh, would have been incredible. Never mind good. Incredible. Uh, I've even sort of made uh, Fender licensed uh, strats and left that one off. <laughs> That's how bad that is. Just floating around like that. It's just problematic and trouble. I would have thought that it had more feedback on that. But, uh, you know, considered putting that in there. That's a real big improvement, but it should have been there too. Okay, well, let's move on a little bit further. Most people are familiar with this. If you're not, don't know where you've been. <laughs> it's been there forever. Well, since the first strats, in fact. But what they did... Uh, is they moved on and they put this little button in here called an S1 switch. This works with the button up in the same way that he always has. There, these two, there, these two, and there is this one. Very simple. Everybody knows it. Well, if you've never seen a strat, well then you don't know it. That's why I always talk about these little things <laughs> that some people might find silly. But they're not silly if you've never been to a strat before. Some people haven't. Okay. Well, when you press this in, it's another story. And the S1 switching, again, a lot of people know about, but there's a few that don't. So you've just got to bear with me on this one while we just whip through that. Well, if you've got this here and that in, all three of these pickups are on. And they're in series, which means it's this one feeds, this one feeds, this one, and it all comes out the end. So it should be it's like a humbucker and off, <laughs> if you think about it. Well, if we move it to there, then we get these two in series. And if we move it to there, we get these two in series. And if we move it to there, then we get, well, actually, we get it in parallel. All three of them, right? The middle and the bridge pick up in series, but this one's in parallel. That's a bit weird. So these two are like input, input, output, but this one's running alongside them. So think of a pick up and another one at the side. That's the easy way. If we push down to here, what you get now is the bridge pick up, this one, is in parallel with the neck and the middle pickups in series. These are in series, that one's in parallel with them. Well, yeah. The tones also vary, which you might not consider, but some of these tones don't work when these are set up in funny ways, like with that down. So just bear that in mind, won't you? It's a little bit of a deviance. I'm not going to spend all day on this, because uh, one of the things I am doing, going to do is whiz outside and play it. Yeah, why not? That's what it's for. Now, moving on to these pickups. Here we are. Fender say that they are their noiseless fourth generation pickups. Uh, yeah, well, they are. <laughs> they, they claim that they're better than this and they're better than that. And I, I have to say that the version 3s were pretty good, actually. Uh, I like the version 3 ones of these. But the version 4s do sound actually better. And it's in a funny way, but 
you'll get to hear that later. When I say a funny way, it's a better funny way, if you know what I mean. Uh, and if you don't, watch the video. <laughs> but they say, noise-free performance, the pinnacle of Fender's vintage style sound, with effectively noise-free performance. They keep on about that. The pinnacle of Fender's noiseless pickup designs. They keep on about the pinnacle, don't they? Pristine cleans and fat overdriven tones. Well, not as fat and overdriven as a humbucker, but they make one with a humbucker on it anyway. So, well, these are great if you want a Fender Strat, and the humbucker one's great if you don't. <laughs> I'm getting worse. So, pickups, very interesting on this guitar. By the way, they say right now you can't buy them any other way except on this guitar. Well, you can, you can buy them any other way. You can go to that uh, guy on the internet, uh, the Stratosphere, because he strips them down and sells these separate. Uh, so you can go to him. Uh, I think it's thestratosphere.com. He's not cheap, by the way, but, well, if you can't get him any other way, he is cheap, isn't he? There you go. Now, I have to say, I thought this was a big improvement for a Fender. Uh, they've moved the uh, truss rod adjustment to down this end of the neck and cut this out a little bit here. Not that that makes any difference, but what does make the difference is it makes this truss rod very easy to adjust. Just twizzle it around either way. Don't go and do it if you don't know what you're doing, by the way. There are proper ways of adjusting that. But that's a big improvement. It's out of the way. You haven't got all that crap at the other end of the neck to mess around with. Yeah, very nice. Well, here we are on the all-important neck. Yeah, looks pretty good. It, well, it looks like most Fender necks, really. Uh, not the vintage necks, because the vintage necks have got very thin uh, frets. On this one, uh, we've actually got, uh, what have we got? It says here, medium jumbo. Well, like 6505, I don't know, 6101, I don't know, I just, whatever. But they, they are fatter than the, uh, the vintage ones. I like them, actually. Uh, not bad at all. I'm not sure what these inserts are. They could be uh, mother of pearl, they could be plastic pro, I know. Does it tell me? No. <laughs> what do you expect? But the, uh, the radius of this neck uh, is one of those things called a compound uh, radius. The scale length is regularly 25.5, which is a fender uh, neck. But this radius varies from 9.5 inches to 14 inches, depending where you are on the neck. So 14 inches up here. And 9.5 inches down there, I would say, looking at that. Very nice. It does uh, stop the strings choking off like on the old strats, but, uh, oops, I'm playing it. Better do that, other. <laughs> like on the old strats, uh, you used to have lots of problems on your bend. But on the, these newer style strats, you don't get any of that. About time. That's <laughs> How many years did it take to fix that? I don't know. But there you go. Uh, nice frets. Nice fretboard too, it's rosewood. You can get a maple one, and uh, you know, if you like it a bit more toppy, get a maple one. If you like the regular sort of strat, get the rosewood one. I think Hendrix was more maple. But I think he had both, so. The back of the neck, of course, is maple. You can see it there. Now moving along a bit further, what we've got is, uh, first of all, this is a simulated bone uh, nut. That's what they call it, I think. Synthetic bone. Simulated synthetic. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, what can you say? I like the real thing myself, but, you know, if you want to have this type of uh, thing, fine. Makes no difference. They just work the same, don't they? They've changed this uh, logo somewhat. There's none of the little, you know, things up here that used to be there. But you've just got this straight Fender Stratocaster. It's all right. That's how it works. It's still their logo. They're still promoting the product, so what can you say about that? This has been changed, this little string tree, to a slightly newer design, but no. does it make much difference? Probably not. But what's also changed, on uh, a lot of the new offenders that I've seen, these uh, adjusters or tuners used to be tapered. Well, I think it was that way. Could have been that way. <laughs> Doesn't really matter, but they got bigger one way or the other. Oh, yeah, well, that's better, they said. Now they've done away with that on this strap. 
they're all the same height. But they are locking tuners, uh, as you'll see when we whip round the back now. Now for the few guys who don't know how these work, basically you put your string in, you tighten that up, and it holds the string in place, and you adjust your guitar as normal. Basic as that. These have been around a long time. I don't think there's anything really, anything dynamically different about those, uh, other than this, uh, this different height that I spoke about, uh, you know, just a bit earlier. What else we got down here? Well, not a lot. It's got a US thing on it. It's like a polyurethane uh, finish on the back, but it's like, uh, I don't know, satin. That's a good word. Satin urethane, yeah. Nice shape of the back of the neck as well. Uh, I, I like that, and uh, yeah, pretty cool. Now, another thing that's uh, quite nice about this neck is uh, the neck actually mutates from one shape to another. You've heard of a C shape or a D shape or a this shape or a, a vintage V shape or a, you know, what this one does is it, uh, it mutates from a C shape to a D shape down the neck. That's quite nice actually, uh, very nice when you're playing it and uh, I think that's a bit of an improvement overall, quite nice. I like the finish too like I said, very good. Now coming to the neck joint, uh, yeah it, it's what they call a four bolt asymmetrical uh, joint, that's what they say, not me. I just call it like all the others. <laughs> Actually, in many ways, it's a lot like the others, except that they've, you know, on some of the ones I've seen, they, they had it more out a bit and angled like this, this way. But on this one, they didn't do that. They just sort of rounded the edge off. Uh, like the Jeff Beck one, I thought was, well, actually, near enough as good as this one. Little in it. Uh, yeah, so is that an improvement? Well, it might be. Uh, you can get further up the neck with it. Whether it's a big improvement is another story. There's another thing to note as well. Down here, you'll notice that the shape here, as this neck comes out of the body, has changed. It sort of used to come out to about here, and then sort of taper off into the, into the neck shape. But now it sort of starts further back this way, and tapers much quicker down here. So that, that's changed, without a doubt. It's probably for the better. Well, here we are around the back. It's all very nice. It's got the usual sort of standard plate. Maybe this has been cut out slightly different, but it's basically a standard plate. I've had this off. It looks just like all the others, the, the, the core at the back. And just notice this one's only got, actually got three uh, springs on it. Interesting stuff. You'll also notice that uh, if you look at the, the body, it's been joined right there and runs all the way across. So it's a two-piece body, at least. It does look two-piece to me. I can't see any more, but it's very clear that it's two-piece. Yeah, you see that? Another thing is, I think this cutout is more extreme than uh, on some of the other strats I've got, which I like that. I like these cutouts. They, they help fat guys, don't they, like me? <laughs> There you go. Uh, what else can I say about round the back? Well, we've already so said that it's older. It's a nice enough finish. I like the finish on this one, this sort of aged uh, cherry, as they call it, cherry sunburst. Yeah, all very good. Let's go back. Now, what I am going to do quite quickly, and I'm not going to spend all day on it, is I'm just going to undo this, and uh, we'll have a quick look at what's going on inside there. And then we'll go back up top, and I'll tell you the sort of things that I had the issues I had, uh, uh, and the sort of issues your dealer would have uh, when he receives one from Fender, generally. Yeah, well, at least generally in the case of this one. <laughs> well, here we are. Uh, yeah, it's the first time I've undone one of these as well, especially on one of these. But there we go. Uh, maybe you can get a, a sort of shot of what's underneath. Let's turn it over. Take a closer look. Well, the first thing to note is uh, uh, all these three appear to be exactly the same pickup, which is uh, useful. Oh no, well, different colours on that one, but same part number, is it? Three, two, uh, four, five. 
Yeah. Well, they are all basically the same part numbers. Yep, they are. Absolutely. So, irrespective of different coloured wires, yeah, well, there you have it. The difference on each one, by the way. I don't know why that is. Nobody's going to tell me. <laughs> but there you go. Bit of a look at the back of the, uh, the new pick. So what have we got going down here? Anything special going on? No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, soldering's not bad. Usual sort of uh, capacitors. Or capacitor in this case. Wiring looks pretty standard for this type of uh, strat with the S1. There's the, 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 uh, the pot. I won't spend all day on that, but yeah, overall, not bad. Usual fender type of uh, scratch plate, or call it what you will. Yeah, more can I say? Not bad. Yeah. You'll notice down inside the body too, they've got this, uh, this sort of black paint that they put in here, and they've got the grounding wires going to here, and this one goes off underneath to the uh, tremolo unit, or the core. They've got the usual serial number stuck in there, and this cutout up here, that's the new bit. Yeah, all nice. You could change this guitar to humbuckers if you wanted to. Usual sort of bigger cutout holes that it's moved to these days. And uh, I don't think that's a bad thing, particularly. Uh, yeah, do more with it. Anyway, I'm going to bolt this back and uh, go back up top. Yeah, it's all interesting. Yeah. Well then, here I am, back up top, so to speak. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah, there's a few things that can be annoying, really. Uh, although, don't get me wrong, it's a great Strat. When you hear it played, well, maybe not my playing, but the Strat will sound great. <laughs> but you can see down here, actually right at the side of the uh, tremolo, there's actually a hole. It's been machined too far down, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. It wasn't on my other strats. <laughs> it's on this one. Maybe it sold me a duff. No, I doubt it. But they're probably all the same, actually. Yeah, so that's a bit of a misnomer, isn't it? Uh, the way that it came set up, I want to talk about that for a few minutes, actually, because I think that's very important. Now, listen, the first thing is, Let's not worry about uh, accusing the dealer of something. <laughs> it isn't the dealer's fault because I said, oh, when it gets to you, just give me the box as it comes. Because what I wanted to do was to actually do a bit of a close-up analysis of what I actually got, or even worse than that, what the dealer got. So was the dealer actually worth having, you know, rather than just some mail order who didn't bother do anything? Well. A lot of people are like that, the mail order boys. They just start there, there it is, send it out. Now, they all claim that they do this and they do that. But they don't always do that, uh, as I've found to my detriment more than once. But on this one, as I said, I got it in the way the dealer would receive it. And uh, if you look at this uh, bit down here, this tremolo, well, you know, I like it set about, oh, eighth of an inch or less at the back of the tremolo. So I've got a bit of up pull and lots of down. I'm just like that. That's the way I like it. Well this one, I remember, it had at least a quarter of an inch <laughs> or th nearly three-eighths of an inch up here like this it was. Not like that, which is what I expected. So that was a bit of a problem. I had to go and set the guitar up. Uh, really out of the box, which I guess is what a lot of dealers would do. You would probably never see that. Well, would you? Uh, just be careful where you buy from and make sure you go to a reputable dealer. My dealer would have done this for me, no problem. You know, great bunch of guys uh, in that place. Yeah, but your dealer might not have. They might have just shipped it straight out, paid no attention, and there you go. And you would have thought that's how strats are. Well, some people would. Uh, the guys that know strats will, will be laughing at this point, but of course not everybody's like them, are they? Uh, some people really don't know, uh, even the S1 switching. Some 
people just, oh my God, what's that? You know, I thought I was buying a Strat. Well, you are. <laughs> I think also that the this this tremolo arm thing, when it was adjusted to where they sent it, it was about there. Yeah, you can see how near to the body it really is. Maybe you can't. Well, I can tell you now. It, it, it's sort of sticking in the strings almost, hardly playable. And even now, with it set near enough where I want it, uh, I, yeah, it's got to have that, that bit of a sweep up, I think. Uh, just to keep it out of the way of everything else, it's just a bit of a pain. So I thought that was a bit of a bit of a job. You can adjust this, by the way, the little set screw down there. You'll probably see pictures of a lot of this stuff floating up on screen as I'm talking about it. It's a good way of doing it, and I've got this great camera that can zoom into the whites of your eyes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, all very nice. Well, one of the things I didn't mention was the case. You know, we, we saw it there, but I didn't really do anything about it. Well, it's a made in China case, uh, it says on. Uh, but it's not a bad case. In fact, the only thing is, I don't think that case is quite as good as the one that's the previous series of, you know, the plastic type uh, of uh, case that came with fenders. Uh, you know, 2008 onwards. That case, that was a great case. I've got two or three of them. Yeah, I think they're better than this one. But this is an elite. <laughs> it's not supposed to be better. I don't think it is. I think it's the case is not quite as good. And just one last thing uh, I just wanted to mention about the Fender Elite. Listen, the word elite conjures up <laughs> trouble from history with Fender. And the, the elite that I used to know was not really a very good guitar indeed. It was discontinued. It had three buttons instead of the switch and things, things like that. Things that, well, were crappy. <laughs> so it didn't catch on. So the, the name Elite, uh, I don't know. I don't know whether that's the right name or it isn't. Uh, don't forget that other thing. Yeah, it really bugs me. It really does. So what about a, a score out of 10 for this Fender Elite? Uh, yeah, well, I like the guitar. I like the, the design of the neck. I like the frets. Uh, I like the tuners. I like the, the pickups incredibly well. They're, they're really good. The S1 switching, well, it's there and it's okay. I don't like that floating around. I didn't like this squash down here. I don't like that not angled up a little bit. As for the rest, I don't like the little hole that sticks out there. That's a bit of a bug there. Looks horrible. Uh, what else? I didn't like how it's got to be reset up even though it was set up at Fender. Bit weird. Bit weird. So instead of my 10 out of 10, it's going to get, uh, it's going to be thrown back a bit to an 8. But it's definitely worth buying, don't get me wrong. Great guitar, if you can put up with those foibles of that sort of stuff and this thing here and you know, you don't care about holes and little things like that. It's a pity that they just didn't, uh, well, maybe they did consider those other things. I've never seen anybody talking about that floating around. In fact, it's so bad on a Strat uh, for me and probably a lot of other guys that, uh, well, when I made this uh, duplicate, we'll call it that, actually it was a Fender authorized Strat. I made in those components. I, I left that off. I had a volume there and a tone there and said stuffy, you know. But it's a slightly different story. I like the rubber on these as well, just by the way. So an 8 out of 10, not quite there, but very nearly there. If they'd only just done them a couple of different things. Yeah. They are just as great as well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you can check up there. There's that little button thing. It might say to you, would you buy this strap? Wouldn't you buy it? If you wouldn't buy it, well, why not, and that sort of thing. That, them are always worth filling out, because uh, it gives us a good idea of uh, where we're at with uh, the elite. And I could post it back on the, uh, the video, so we all know where we stand, <laughs> or what the, the users or the buyers think about Fender elite strats, American elite. Yeah. So it's up there. And you can press that button and find out more about my website and things like that and my YouTube channel and so on and so forth. But enough of that. Let's go and play. It's going to be that way anytime soon. Thanks for watching. I've got more videos coming up, but uh, like everything, it takes a bit of doing. Oh, one last thing. Yeah, that one last thing. 
It's now in my hands. This fabulous, uh, you know, well, I'll call it fabulous. A lot of other guys seem to think it's fabulous as well, actually. And uh, anybody who's ordered it, well, the guys that ordered it from gravitywavecd.com will be getting it anytime soon. Well, you didn't. Oh, you're waiting for the downloads, or it's cheaper, or oh, you're going to copy. Well, feel free. <laughs> you won't be able to copy it because it's yeah, not distributed in the old ways. It's distributed in a new way. And uh, yeah, it's four of 16 tracks. Yeah, everyone a winner. The best thing about it, though, it's on a real CD. It's not on this pussy footing around with duplication CDs, that rubbish stuff. It's replicated. It's a real deal. So, uh, yeah, anytime soon. Check it out on iTunes. Gravity Waves. Get out of here. You shut up. <laughs> Get out of here. It's the music. See you next time. Thank you.